sitting here with actor Rizwan Manji, and I'm your host, Rajiv Satyal. Hopefully you can see us both. Yeah, you can Hello. wave. Yeah, that's really good. <laughs> and uh, I think we're up, we're live, we're good. Okay, that's, uh, that's always a start. We've, uh, we've done four episodes so far, and we really want to thank our sponsors. But let me go right into it and uh, get right into... Uh, where you were born. Let's just start oh, wow. from the very beginning, okay. kind of um, inside the actor's style of, of where did it begin. I was born in Toronto. Okay, yeah, just like Toronto. my wife. Oh, really? Yeah, there she's floating around I here somewhere. My wife was born in Toronto as well. Oh, very nice. uh, <laughs> yeah, I was born in uh, Toronto and then was there for a little bit, but then actually was raised, my childhood was in Calgary, Alberta. Okay, yeah. so you're a Canadian kind of through and through. I'm Canadian, yeah, all the way till acting school I was... I'm still, I'm still Canadian. Yeah, you're, you're once a Canadian, you're always Canadian. You're still you, you, Canadian. Don't, you don't renounce it or anything <laughs> right? like that. I don't think people renounce it. That's why you guys are so nice. Canadians are so nice. Yeah. You, you know, that's a good, it's kind of a, a trite thing to say. I don't think my wife would say that, but okay. <laughs> Where's your wife from? She's a New Yorker. Oh, yeah, wow. So, so okay, that's And the raised opposite. in New York. Yeah. yeah. So. New York values. So, right? New York values. <laughs> New York values. <laughs> We've already got to Ted Cruz. We're like, already in like Cruz. two minutes. Oh, we're already in. you got to have a Ted Cruz reference as soon as you're in. You know, we're, we're talking about acting. It should be Tom Cruise, but we're already in on Ted Cruz. I don't know where we go. So, but you, speaking of which, you've worked with some pretty big people. I mean, we watched Wolf of Wall Street. I've seen it three times, I think. And it is a romp. It, it is just a such an entertaining movie. Yeah, and you it too. If you watch very closely, and if you don't blink, don't blink, then you might actually see me in this movie. I saw uh, you, and I go, that's, that's Chris Watchy, and I thought that um, was so awesome. Well, the, the, the funny thing about that, which you, you're you also in the business, so you know, I shot that movie for six weeks, Yeah. and I had two great, you know, scenes in that movie okay. that you never see in the that's movie. on the cutting floor. I mean, it's already a three-hour movie, and for them to not put that part in. That is kind of a blow to my ego. I mean, there was hours. three hours, and we couldn't get to actually my portion of it, but that's fine. Uh, we so, yeah, 15 it's minutes of Leo climbing out of the movie, but we need But it's one of those things. You know, I get to say I was in the, you know, I get, I get to say I'm in the movie, and yeah, then, absolutely. Uh, but I'm not really in the movie. But I, you're in it, but you're not I am. I say not. I say the F word about 10 times, and you can see that. And then 10 times, that's proportional to the number of so, times yeah, and that's I probably the person who said it the least in the whole yeah, movie. Yeah, that, that's probably <laughs> true. So, I mean, I gotta add, I got a fanboy for a second here. I mean, did you meet Leo? What was it like uh, working with, with names like this and Scorsese? And, I mean... You know what? Yeah, we were there for um, six weeks and all... Because I played one of the... I played Khalil... The character did actually have a name, even though he's a story now, a moment before, he's and... now just the guy who's sitting there. Um, but... You know that we were one of the brokers right. uh, um, in the firm, so we were there. He was there. We were there the entire time. So yeah. him, uh, Jonah, Jonah Hill. Hill sure. uh, you know, there was a there was one day where it was the craziest thing because it was Martin Scorsese was there, and then um, uh, John Favreau was there. No, no big name. And then no names. obviously Rob Reiner, who's yeah. uh, he plays his father. Plays, uh, parts in the movie and Steven Spielberg so it was like kind of like a crazy day of like what is going and on and it was on Maji you see the guy was here, here and I was there the on the sitting show. on a chair probably asleep because it was like 17 hour days and I think there is a scene if you watch that I have like fast and that's yeah. not actually I was actually fast you were asleep. actually asleep. that was your so method yeah, yeah that's it you know that's it like that. so, <laughs> we've talked a lot about the Wolf of Wall Street a movie that I am in for like a second <laughs> like, but, but it's so big that it's just <laughs> know, what's it's that, you know, a really big movie in which I am in a millisecond but, but, it, but that's you know more than I was in it so very, <laughs> great so I was in more that. of the Wolf of Wall Street than, than the host was which, which was which is kind of great and then, so let's talk a little bit about, you know, this show is about Indian entrepreneurs. We are interviewing people who are outside the box, sort of, you know, off, off track betting, as I call it, because you go off the track, but you're on a track. You know, you got, <laughs> I was a med school track, engineering track, get off the track, and so you're off track betting. And so what you've chosen to do, I mean, acting, yep. and you are a working actor. Trying. Well, I know. I'm looking at your IMDb. You're being very humble right now because it's just reads. I mean, my IMDb looks nothing like that. So, um, pretty amazing stuff. Mine should be I am douchebag. I think that's <laughs> actually my. That's my IMDb. It's probably more like that. This guy. I'm Canadian. Yeah. I can't say that. You can't. It's, it's too edgy. Too edgy. Too edgy. Got to keep it clean. But um, I mean, so 
Let's talk a little bit about outsourced okay. because I mean that that seemed to be the thing that a lot of people know you from. Uh, you know, tell me a little bit about booking that role. You played a character named Rajiv. That's yes. my name. I actually went out for that role. <laughs> oh, you did. Yes, yeah, so and I lost it to you. And I thought, wow, I even have the name Rajiv, and I lost it. But I'm glad I did because uh, it was great to watch you work. Um, it was uh, that that was actually a crazy um, audition process. Mm. Uh, I actually was called in to read for the role of Gupta. Yeah, which, which is, Parachina which plays. Is par, which yeah. Parachina plays. So, um, more humiliating. Gupta was the goop. Uh, the goop. The, the goop. The goop, <laughs> sort of. Uh, Gupta was the goop. Uh, Gupta was the goop. And kind of the, the kind of crazy characters. So yeah. you went out for that. So, uh, yeah, I went out for, yeah, I went out for that. And, um, you know, it was just the two of us. And while I was there, there was five, you know, they test you. So you go on audition and then... They, you have a test, a screen, mm -hmm. sort of like a screen test, mm -hmm. in with the network, and you know, so they're they're doing all this, and there were five guys reading for Rajiv, and I was reading for me and Pervesh were sort of yeah. battling it out sure. for uh, Gupta, and we're also like really really good friends, yeah. so it was kind of like hard, even though I was like I really want it. You know? Well, of course, <laughs> he is sat on this couch. He's actually laying on this couch. And and I, would, I, would, I would throw a dollar. So I was like, at that time, I had I had I had one kid. I was like, look, I have one kid. You have no kids. I mean, you should just throw this. Yeah, I, you need I mean, I just want you to know, if you get the part, yeah. then it's you know, my children okay. that will Someone not eat. Someone may starve. Yeah, yeah exactly. so I hope you donate There's a human proceed. being that will not eat. Right. Please uh, donate your salary to feeding my kids. That's right. I mean, of course, he booked the part. So uh, there was, that was that. So he ended up booking. Uh, he ended up getting the part, and he, you know, and killing it, it and killing yeah, it. It was amazing. And I actually uh, had uh, an offer to test for another role uh, on a show for Fox that actually never went. It was called Tax Man. Okay. With Martin Short. Okay. And so that was going on, and it. all of a sudden, my you know my wife who works for. Thompson Royce. Yeah, she sure. was out of town and I was alone with my she was like one ish okay. years old and I got a call saying we they um, the, the network wants you to come in tomorrow and you, we want you to audition for the role of Rajiv. And I had I mean I'd obviously read the pilot, but I had not memorized any of the lines and it was sure. twelve pages of dialogue, uh, all this stuff that I had not done and I had, you know, my daughter, so right. basically had to wait till she went to sleep. Had uh, my, my friend come over, my friend Ali Malji came over, okay. uh, and sort of you know ran, and you uh, ran, just ran it over yeah. and over and over again. And then my friend saw you the next day, right before I went in. She we had lunch and sort of read it again, and and I went in, and I still to this day say it was one of the worst auditions I've had. But you know, you were like, because in your mind you have no idea. In your right. mind you're thinking, I screwed up this line. Oh, At one point, the cast director said. Oh, shit in yeah, the middle yeah, yeah. of, and they didn't redo it and I was like this is terrible like you know but then you know but you that's what that. I, then I booked it so yeah. it was like this crazy thing where sometimes you don't always know what you're doing you know, I, I, maybe they like the fact that I was such a bumbling idiot that that's, that's what's going on it's not that it's not that you was kind of a bumbling idiot yeah <laughs> yeah he kind of was that yeah, he sort of was that sort of character in the, in the in the show, and, and the host of this show, kind of a bumbling idiot. So Rajiv kind of, <laughs> <laughs> Rajiv kind of lives on, which is kind of great. So, but t let's talk about that process, because, uh, you know, I've auditioned for things. I have booked a couple things, and uh, I, fell I felt like I fell down the toilet, and I came up with gold. And other times you walk out, yeah, I totally killed that, and you get nothing. And you get nothing. And what, is there a rhyme or reason to I, it? You know, I thought I'd figured it out. I literally felt like I'd, but like, once out sort of happened, and I was sort of, you know, you're going into rooms, and there's a little bit of a feeling like, okay, we know you from this, and sure. I felt like I was figuring it out. Yeah. And you can only figure it out to a certain extent, because right. there's all these things happening in the background. I guess right. you can figure out that part. Once you realize that there's other stuff going on that's out of your control, sure. Sure. then you can sort of let go of it, you know what I mean? So there, there is no rhyme or reason, but there is kind of a rhyme or reason behind the scenes that you can sort of at least be aware of, so you're okay. not always being like, Oh God, it, was, it was because of me and I was awful. Right. A lot of times you're amazing and it it just doesn't work because of this and sure. the, like puzzles fitting together that just don't. I don't know if you know Mo Ali. Uh, uh, Asif Ali is an actor out there. I know Asif Ali. And Mo yeah. is his, his manager and brother. We went to dinner and we sat down for four hours. Four hours. And another half an hour in the parking lot just talking. And he told me audition stories. And yeah. one actually specific one that took about two hours to tell him. It was totally worth it. And it talked about all the way down to the color of the shirt that his brother should wear because the casting director didn't like this color and liked this specific shirt from The Gap. And this is knowledge that he had that somebody yeah. else didn't have. And, uh, you know, without dropping names, giving too much away, I, I just, it's everything you've heard that these things are out of your control 
but you go, wow, you're right. If I didn't know to wear that blue shirt from The Gap, I would not put this That's on. right. That's and right. how would you know unless... How would you know? Unless... Moali. Unless it's insider watching, trading. Please call me next time. That, I have you know, Moali can give, can give you this. Uh, unless it's insider trading like yeah, this. Exactly. Right. Yeah, exactly. So we can, we, it all comes back to Wall Street in the end. So I'm going to sort of Tarantino it a little bit and go back. Uh, okay. So you were born in Toronto, uh, yeah. Calgary, uh, via Calgary, and then when did you come to the States? I, 1993, okay. I went to, I got accepted into the American Musical and Dramatic Academy. Okay. So I went to New York. New York. And so yes. you never tried to be an engineer or a doctor I or... I did not because I have absolutely no other skills. <laughs> Zero. Like, really. Two and two I, think, I think my parents were really hoping that I would do something, yeah. but I think they realized, like, really, it's what just, is Yeah, do? exactly. What am I going to do? No. Uh, I did, I did, I went, so I did go to the University of Alberta for one year. Okay. And it was, uh, I was a drama major, so okay. I was doing other, I was doing sort of all, all the, all, like, you know, a whole bunch of classes, but focusing on drama. And I realized at the University of Alberta that I needed to do more of a conservative or something that was more focused right. on, on acting, because that's what I wanted to do. And so that's why I ended up applying and getting okay. accepted. Yeah. I applied to other schools that I didn't get accepted to. Okay. okay. But that's the one I got into. That's <laughs> the one you got into. And then and here you sit. So uh, that, that's pretty great. And then, um, wh where are you from in India? Your family is from... Uh, my family My family actually is from uh, Gujarat. Family. From He's actually family. Asian. He's Asian. Family. <laughs> Whoa! Hack <laughs> joke right there. There you go. Slap that great clock every Thursday. Okay. Let's do it. Um, from Gujarat. Gujarat, okay. Uh, although my parents were both born in Tanzania. Oh! So Tanzania. the ancestry okay. is, is, uh, is Gujarati. Okay. But... They were they they were both born in Tanzania. In Africa. In Africa. Yeah, I think. Uh, yeah, my wife, okay. family, her uh, her mom, uh, uh, family is all through. Uh, not South so America. much in common. Absolutely, <laughs> Canada, Africa. I'm telling you, seriously. So very cool stuff. Um, and so, uh, so you're good, you're Gujarati. I am. Okay. I, I don't, don't speak Gujarati because okay. we speak a little bit of Kachi. Okay. Which is peppered with Swahili. So. Oh, of I course. actually went to like, Kutch. Who doesn't? Yeah. We, me and my wife traveled to Kutch, and we were like, oh, we get to speak Kutch, so we started speaking, and we were like, we have no idea what you're saying. Can you need to stop talking to us? We started talking to us in English, they're like, this is just not working. You need to stop I speak Kutch. Uh, Kutch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I'm not even trying. It's just not. <laughs> That's all. So, yeah, so this is spells a notion. So when I say to my friends, because Asif Manvi yes. is a future guest on the show and yes. a previous guest on my podcast, and you know he says he's Gujarati, yeah, and, and he's Muslim. You're Muslim, yeah. And my friends will go, well, no, but they're Muslim. They can't be Gujarati. I go, you're wrong. We you can be. You're a, you're yes, you're proof of that. So is he. Yeah, I know. There you go. So, so my that wife spells <laughs> that to all my friends and go, you're wrong. You're yeah, not you're wrong. Go, there you go. So be inclusive. Muslims are they, everywhere. They, they are everywhere. They are Ted everywhere. Cruz. Muslims yeah. are Ted Cruz everywhere. Ted Cruz is Canadian and he's not nice. So that actually oh, he's breaks the, his And he's from Calgary. And he's oh from God, Calgary. So, so yeah, this is so kind of an awful, awful thing. <laughs> I want to give a shout out to our sponsors here during this break because I like to break momentum. That's what I like to do. You get some momentum going and then you break it with, uh, with giving a shout out to our sponsors without whom this would not be possible. So thank you very much to Atlas Hospitality, the undisputed leader in Southern California hospitality sales. Check them out at atlashospitality.com. Also, Abacus Payroll. You don't know how to use an Abacus. Math, no, probably my, not. My daughter knows how to use an Abacus. His daughter knows how to use an Abacus. Does she know how to use Abacus Payroll? I who is a leading provider of payroll for, since 1992. Leading uh, provider of payroll services. Check them out at payrollprovider.com. And maybe your wife could use them because, you know, she does corporate yeah, uh, she, HR stuff. So just Absolutely. get Thompson Ritter's boom. Abacus, Abacus just got you a uh, you know, Fortune 500 company. I, I'm, I'm going to stay out of the details. I'll that <laughs> and then if it all works out, you can get her a gift of High Glow Jewelers, uh, the destination for handcrafted 22 karat jewelry in the United States. Check them out at highglow.com. Thank you very much to our three sponsors. Uh, we cannot do this without you. We could, but it would not be as good. How about that? So let's jump back into the, the questions. Uh, how much did and does being Indian influence you? I mean, uh, growing up, now, does it help you, hurt you? You know what? It influences me. A lot. I mean, I, if we're talking about acting specifically, I know there's always this thing about, uh, you know, when you're starting out, you're like, I, I, and you're an actress, so you know how it is. You're like, you don't want to be pigeonholed in these roles. Right. And you go through this whole thing. It's like, I don't want them to see me as just this. And I, I decided early on that I was like, that's not, I, I mean, I'm Indian. It's not like I can, it's not like I'm going to, I'm going to fake being something else. Right. You know? right. Like, oh, yeah, he's 
not he's Irish. Irish. That guy was so Irish. I Literally. think that I embraced it, and I think that that's also it, it helped me a lot because you were able to go and say, look, I can do all these things. There's a whole uh, there's there's obviously points where you have to sort of make a decision. There's stereotypes, and there's all these things. The whole terror. There's all that stuff that, sure. that, that that that's involved in that aspect of it. But I've embraced it, and I I, I honestly feel like. A, a, a lot of the times it's helped me because getting into these rooms, uh, you know, a lot of times there, I have actors who are just starting out who are who are Caucasian and they um, they don't get there's so many of them there's so many there's that so they don't get the opportunity yeah so they don't sure. get an opportunity to get the auditions and so we we uh, early on it was you know when I started in uh, when I graduated in 1995 and started auditioning for stuff in in New York. Uh, I was getting a, a lot more auditions because sure. there was fewer of us, yeah. and when they needed somebody like me, I got the opportunity to. to so it helped. So it it actually helped me sure. climb the ladder a little bit faster than my than the, the yeah, other kids. Yeah. Us. So sure. uh, I think it's helped me a lot, and mm -hmm. I think I've embraced it, and I and I, and I feel like uh, um, yeah, definitely. Where do you see yourself in in one year? Not to get too uh, um, interviewee, but I mean, do you do you think like that? Do, do you have a, sort of a goal or a path? You know what? What I've uh, what I've started doing and what I'm hoping to, to accomplish uh, in a year. Let's say if that's the if that's the bracket. And since we're you know talking about business, is that I sort of have branched out and also am trying to produce um, okay. uh, shows. Uh, I have a a buddy of mine who's Canadian. He's a he's a writer. He was nominated for like a CSA award in Canada. Um, the CSA is Canadian uh, Canadian Screen Screen uh, Award. Okay. Uh, he did a movie called The Calling with Susan Sarandon. Okay. Uh, and uh, we met because he wanted to be me to be in that movie, but I was unavailable because I was doing a, an, another show. But we ended up meeting up, and he wrote this uh, animated pilot called Food Court about okay. an Indian family who opens up an Italian restaurant in a food court. That's cool. Uh, and he was like, "Look, I and so I, I read it. I loved it. Right. And we." We decided that we would go. We, we, I would come on board to help him sort of, uh, um, you know, produce and pitch the show. So we have that, and we have another show with him as well uh, called Hug Me I'm Mayor, about uh, a Muslim mayor okay. uh, of a of a of a city. I don't know if you know Cal. As we go back to Calgary, the mayor of Calgary is an Ismaili uh, guy named. Uh, um, Nahid Nenshi, okay. and uh, he's he won like mayor of the world. He's like the most amazing mayor. In I've, the world. I've read. You must have heard about. Yeah, he's like definitely. an amazing guy. Better than Rob Ford. Rest in peace. Rest in peace. Rest in peace. So, <laughs> so we we basically you know make sort of an homage to him. We mm -hmm. we sort of created this show. So we're pitching those shows right now. Very cool. Uh, in Canada, mostly because we're both Canadian and we feel like we have a better chance. So I'm hoping in a year that those shows will sort of, you know, find a home and we'll start, I'll start that aspect of it sure. on the other, on the other side right. of the, you know, other side of the camera. Is that what it is? Other is side of the border. At least not on the border. At least that. Yeah. Exactly. Definitely that. So, yeah. well, exciting stuff. That's yeah. So that's what I hope to be in a, you know, uh, hope to be in a year. No, that's the best, most specific answer we've gotten. I think Nithin is nodding back there. Nithin, by the way, is our producer on the show. He's the man behind the camera, yeah. so you're not seeing him, but uh, he's there in all his glory doing all these things behind the scenes, so shout out to Nithin, and, and uh, very very good answer. Best one we've gotten on that so far, oh, uh, which is really cool. Uh, let's, uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, making it. This is a big question okay. for me, because especially in California, and specifically in Los Angeles, people talk about making it. Mm -hmm. do you, how do you define that? Do you think in those terms? Well, let's start with that. Do you think? In I, do, I, I, I don't. I, I don't think I. I don't think I do. Although you know, growing up, mm -hmm. I mean, I was like, oh yes, I'm going to win an Oscar, and I'm gonna get, you know, I'm gonna win, a, sure. win an Emmy. Those kind of things where you're gonna be, you know, uh, you know, in a way, growing up, uh, I was a kid who watched every sitcom. Yeah, me too. Ever. And that was my, like, you know, Thursday night sitcom, that was my, that was my thing. And then it's doing those things, the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, they just did the 80s, raised on television, and all of us I know, all, gosh, okay, and I know all the theme songs, yeah. I can do, I, so I grew up, and that's what I wanted to do, like, that's the reason I got into I was like, I want to be on a Thursday night sitcom. Oh, wow. So you watched it, and you said, I want that's to what do that. And then the thing is, it's like, does that mean I'm, like, you know, I'm, I was on a Thursday night sitcom sure. on NBC. Is that, sure. what? but yeah. that, you know, I, it's hard to say. Like, there's so much. More, you know what I mean. So I don't know if it's. I don't know if you ever like. I made it. You just. You're. You're constantly doing it. I think sure. that might be making it. It's sort of like I'm. As long as I'm continually doing it, and I'm able to sort of support yeah. myself and, and my, my kids eat food. 
mean, what did wife help? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I eat with my wife's help, straight up with, with no kids. So, uh, no, that, that's a that's a great. It's kind of like fog, right? I mean, you're you're driving and you go, oh, it's really foggy up there. Then you get up there. Yeah. You go, no, 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 up there it's really it's foggy. Right. Yeah. So it's you're sort of kind of always trying to make it. Like it's like still we're still doing the same thing, right? We're all going, uh, still auditioning, still sure. trying to get the next gig, still trying to do sure. the next. Uh, the next big thing. So yeah, are are uh, are there inflection points though? Are you you graduated from school mm -hmm. and then I mean my the first one that comes to mind for me is for you is American Daisy. American Daisy was a was was a big deal that we didn't realize it was going to be a big deal right. at the time. So this is Deep Kathare basically produced this movie, mm -hmm. starred in this movie. Uh, the reason you're sitting here, by the way, shout out to Deep, but Rachel who was uh, episode four or guest episode four, her husband Deep put me in touch uh, with with uh, Rizwan, and that's why you're sitting here. So Deep produced and starred in that movie. It was Cal Penn, it was Deep, it was you. Uh, and that was 1999? 19, I think, yeah. I think it, uh, did it come out in 2000? Okay. I think it might have came out in 2000. You shot it in okay. 1998, maybe? Okay. I don't know. I'm too old now. I have no That's idea. Fine. You're, you're trying to make me right, which is a good, <laughs> good guess. You're, so you're wrong there. I can throw it wrong. But uh, but that was a huge. I mean, that was the first thing that I because I grew up on you know Led Zeppelin and Growing Pains and stuff like that and Family Ties and very white kind of Caucasian sort of thing growing up in Ohio. But American Daisy was the first thing that every Indian kid saw, and that was a huge, huge splash. I mean, it was just something that that really made waves. Well, that's what splashes do, I guess. But is it, uh, do people still come up to you? And is that still it, a thing? Because I would it, think it is. You know what? I'm Surprisingly, it is. Mm -hmm. Like, people, and I'm like, I look nothing like that person anymore. I saw the movie recently with you my son. You have most of your hair still. Like, I know. I'm like, I, that looks like my son. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, people, people love that movie so much. And we were, as I said, we were just shocked by that. Not that, I mean, we thought we made that. Maybe we made a good movie, movie sure. but you know how you know like ninety percent of these movies, ninety nine percent of these movies never see the light of day. We right. don't know what's going to ever happen to them, and something just happened. And you know, I, I was in, you know, after the movie in in Kenya, in India, like there was people have seen this movie all over the world, and uh, yeah, it was. I thought it, you know, it was in in a strange way, it was a big deal for the for the South Asian community. Very so, much so. Uh, I'm also I'm so proud to be a. Uh, a part of that movie. Yeah. Like one of those things where I'm like, yeah, this was like a, it was a big deal um, in my life and it was a, uh, you know, yeah. It's yeah. a, I'm no. Rambling, but yeah. No, 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 but, but, but yeah, I mean, that, that's, it, it was that and it was something that everybody saw and, and, and you guys all stayed in touch and yeah, you know, it was a um, thing. We, 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 we did, like, we're, we, we did for a, for a while and we, we still, like, I, obviously, I, I've, uh, I've talked to Deep and mm -hmm. uh, uh, Ron Abir and uh, um, the person I talked to the, the most is uh, Purva. We started a theater company together, and you know, whenever I go to New York, we uh, we visit, and um, so Purva is the one that I yeah. that I that I see the. So That's see awesome. The most, so. That's so cool. What 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 drives you? I mean, what, what would you say it is that you know, besides maybe feeding three kids, but and not that that's that, that could be an answer too, but. What would you say motivates you? Uh, I think, you know what? I think there's that competitive nature in me. I feel okay. like I'm very competitive. And I think early on I was told by a lot of people that I couldn't do this. You know wow. what I mean? So, Inside the industry or outside? Uh, both. Okay. So there was, there's been several, um, several instances where I, and, and I, and I think that's my personality is like, you, you always want to prove yeah. somebody wrong. And I think there's this thing of like, I'm, you know, until, and I worry about that. It's like it's, at some point, that competitive part is gonna, you, it's gonna dissipate, and then you're gonna be like, oh my god, I hope I'm still able to do this. I hope I'm right. because that's what it, that is that's the drive. Like, I want, okay, just mm -hmm. I want it. I want to be on the show. I want to yeah. do this. I wanna, you know. Um, so there is, there is a definite competitive. Uh, you're like uh, uh, Daniel, and there will be blood. I have a competition. <laughs> I want no one else to succeed. I, uh, I, 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 I quote it. it. I quote there will be blood. So when I see you at the next so, audition, yeah. just remember. Rajiv, I don't care. Name's Rajiv. I'm going to beat Rajiv at the Rajiv. So if game. I tell you random things at the audition to like whisper in my ear, throw me out, get me in my head, get out of college, I was right in it, and then this guy is just sort of slipping me very the I don't doubt that. I'm Canadian You are. You are bound by your Canadian. <laughs> you have to be ethical. Um, would you say that's healthy? I mean, would you say it's healthy to the degree to which you're competitive, or do you think it, it borders I, on unhealthy? Or? I, I don't know. I mean, you tell me. I don't well, know. I mean, I don't know. You all have to say. I mean, you know, to diagnose that. <laughs> we are on the couch. We are on the couch. So exactly. Um, <laughs> I feel like it's healthy if it's not, you know, debilitating. Is that a, yeah? Right. Sure. Like, sure. 
you know, there is there is times there has been, and I've gotten better at it when the rejection happened, which happens a lot, and you're not like, um, I think one of the biggest um, biggest uh, rejections. Uh, I auditioned for the role that um, Joshua Gomez played in Chuck. I tested for it, okay. and like opposite to the outside audition where I felt like I bombed it, right. I felt like my test for, that. for I crushed it, and I was so and I and I you know I nailed it. I had like. And I felt like this was happening, you know, mm-hmm. and it, it just didn't, and that was, that, I felt like I was, I, I felt debilitated after that, because I was like, wow. I can't continue after this, like, what, like, I had just come this far, I had done all, like, you know, there's so many auditions to get to that right. point where you're testing, sure. like, we had a, I had a pre read with the cast director, then you go in, the other producer, and then back. you have and a work, producer, work, work, the, yeah. work session, Network. and you're doing this, and like, right. and you get to this point, and you're like, I'm sorry, this is not happening. And you just feel like I did all this for nothing, you know what I mean? Like for nothing, and you're, it's hard because with that competitive nature, you're like, how am I going to pick myself up? Sure. And so at that, I think maybe at that point it was, it was, it was kind of. But you know, you get used to it because sure. that was one of the first ones, right? That I, when I had just recently moved out to to, to LA. So and it but, gets you going again, probably. It gets yeah. And then the yeah. thing is, when you know that this, when you know what the process is, and you're like, right. look, it actually. The thing is, it's ne- you. You can't feel like that was for nothing, you know, because then those people also, like that cast director, called me in for um, for a show called Privilege, of which I did ten episodes of, based on on yeah. that, that he knew me for this thing. So even on your head, you're like, it's nothing, right? Like, oh, I did this all for nothing. No, there's people. There's people there. They recognize that sure. you're doing th- this work, and it's hard to see that in the moment. I think but, at Margie Haber, the, the auditioning studio, yeah. they told us, they said, at least look at the audition as a free meeting with the casting director. Absolutely. If nothing else, you, you know, if you had to sit down with this person, it would cost you hundreds or thousands of yeah. dollars to get a meeting like this, and the person's actually seeing you work. So there's a there's an upside. Yeah. So would you say your valleys are, valleys are deeper than your peaks are high? So in other words, when you, you show, I mean, I'm a stand-up, so you get up in front of a live audience yeah. all the time. I could the, never do that. Well, there like are the doing th- stand-up, and I could be in live audience. Like, it, it's, it's, <laughs> well, well, but you've done you've done multi-cam sitcoms. Yeah, but it's so, my it's not stuff that I've written. Right, right. You right, know, like, that's scary. Scary. I'm like, yeah, yeah. I, like, I, I can't play the writers. I know. I, 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 I wrote, wrote, I wrote, wrote that, yeah. but instead, I, you know, <laughs> I'm gonna fire that guy. But, you know, that, that's why it's it's so it's so uh, difficult in in some ways. But I think that you know there are two ways of approaching this. You can go in and build it up in your mind, and, and some people rise to that occasion. They go, yeah. "This is a huge deal. I'm going to really build up." But there are other people who just go, "It's no big deal at all." And they really do get to that sort of almost zen place yeah. of going, you know. And you, I guess you got to find what works for you. Yeah, I think, I, you know, I think it's it's helpful to have to to have that that high so that you know what it what what it is that you're sort of. Right, you know, aiming for what you're aiming for. So I feel like that's how. Do you feel inspiration in your body anywhere when you get inspired? Oh, is there a place God. you you find it? I mean, <laughs> is it uh, where would that be? It's my mustache. <laughs> <laughs> that is that's a good answer. I'm not, that's not even a joke. Yes, your <laughs> mustache tingles. <laughs> it becomes a handlebar. Exactly, it kind of rolls around. Yeah, that you can fly with it. It becomes a magic carpet. That wasn't a, 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 an Islamic reference. Oh, like that. oh, oh like, we went mic there. drop. You we went right there. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> I'm not Jasmine, I am Aladdin. So, very, very cool, very cool. Um, but what distinguishes, you think, when you have succeeded and when you failed? I mean, you know, whether you've booked something or, or you could even take it a step further. We've talked a lot about auditioning, but when you're on the set, you're, yeah. you, you do a take, yeah. and then you go, man, I could have done that again, but now the, eh, the bell rings yeah. and they're out, and you go, oh, gosh, that's what people are going to see, and I did it 50 times better before. And that's something that I have, um, I have learned. Uh, to, ha- to deal with because right. initially um, I remember I had done this like early on this independent short film and I kept uh, the director was like we got it and I said look can I just do it again I feel it and he was he was in the, and you know you just want to get that it was like I can do it better I'm yeah. sure I can do it better and uh, you know when I saw it I was like oh they just they cut it and then so right. you have he ended up using the take that he that, that he, he liked because he's the director sure. and um, I think mainly on outsource you figure out that you know when they got it they're the they're 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 the ones who are editing they're the ones who are they they you know there's times where you can go look i can do you want to try this do you want to try this but when they got it they they got it and you have to trust that they because you're putting them yourself sort of as an actor in their hands and when they got it they got it so yeah yeah. and they they can see the whole piece of how yeah i mean there's all there's there obviously are times where you're like well i can do this differently and i you know what about this choice Mm -hmm. But not just like oh I can do it better because if you know if they if 
they have it. They have it, and then they got it. Yeah. And I feel like we got it. You know, I want to sit here and keep going and keep going and keep going. But uh, I feel like we've we've had a great episode here. A lot of uh, back and forth. Is there any advice you have to uh, any anything you want to talk don't about? Don't do it. Don't do it. No, I'm kidding. I'm you kidding. can end up on this couch. <laughs> don't yeah, do it. Don't. Uh, you know, anything you want to plug or any uh, upcoming things? Any way people can reach you or you know? Yeah. Oh, you? my Twitter, mm-hmm. Riz. On underscore Manji, M-A-N-J-I, R-I-Z underscore M-A-N-J-I. That's my Twitter, which I'm old, but I'm trying to use it. I'm trying to figure out how to use it, so please. Yeah, I can't figure out Snapchat, so, you know. And watch Shit's Creek. Okay. Which is, uh, if you're in Canada, it's CBC. And if you're in the U.S., it's on Pop and Amazon, Pop TV and Amazon. What do you see in the ads? Uh, looks really fun. So, yeah. So, I'm on, uh, I'm on Shit's Creek right now. And I just, I'm, uh, I'm doing a pilot, which I have a table read for tomorrow. Wow. And you now. still came here. I, I feel and, so, uh, so, so honored. So, hopefully, uh, you know. That gets picked up, and then I'll tell you about it. I'll come back. Yes, and when we'll we talk about, about it. Of course, <laughs> we'd love to have, have you back anytime. So, uh, and you live right down the street. That's right. You probably walk I, home. I, I walk there. Absolutely. So, that's there you have it. So, very good. Uh, so, just we have, have a talk. comment here from Sarush. We have says, a comment. <clears throat> says, Rizwan oh. is a great actor. Oh, thank you. And doesn't believe that you're sitting right next to him, so they want you to pinch him. Oh, oh my God. God. We oh, I, I, am I pinching him? I was, I pinching I was wondering what they were doing. What kind of show is that? that kind of now show. we're going to like... Yeah, exactly. You're going to slowly... Uh, now, we'll show you, now we'll show you the cover of time. We'll show you the cover of time. Okay. Now, this week's cover of time, you walked in and wonder, what, what kind of show is it? I will pinch him. There you go. You ready? You're going to get a screenshot, that. All right? So... But no, thank you very much, Sarush, for, for the comment. And uh, thanks to Hersha, my wife. Thank you to Nithin, our producer. And of course, our uh, lovely, amazing guest, Rizwan Manji, who uh, is doing great things here in Hollywood, from Canada to New York to here and all over the world. So uh, thank you for tuning in uh, uh, on the Industry Show. It's called the Industry Show because we're from the Indus Valley. We put the Indus in industry. So there you go. Episode 5 of the Industry Show. I've been your host, Rajiv, and I still am.